That's right, you saw it. We got a two iron from Israel to repair. Welcome back to the McGough Shop, Jim McCleary, and we got a Titleist Oversized Plus two iron for repair. And the gentleman that sent it to us said that they didn't have anybody locally and asked us to do it. Sure, why not? So the idea was is that he wanted a Dynamic Gold S300 to put into it to a certain length and we're going and he sent a grip and we we're going to put it on. Now the 2 iron is a that is the oversized plus from Titleist, it's a DCI. In the day, it was quite possibly the most popular type iron that was being made. DCI's dominated that time frame and the oversized plus was the more forgiving a, little, a lot more offset for those folks who just couldn't bring the club to square and they were always using the S300s. The S300s are a pretty tight shaft so they, there was a balancing act for those guys. It has a very small sole which you would expect from a two iron, right? And it, so th what do we got to do? Well we got to, there's a broken shaft in it so we had to take out the broken shaft which is this guy right here. All right. There's the broken shaft. And then we said, okay, we had we ordered a shaft in 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 the idea in advance. We ordered the shaft in advance thinking that it was a taper tip because all the title stuff we've ever dealt with, particularly in that era, has been taper tip. Well, we go to measure it and we put it in there and the thing rattles around. Why? Well, I don't know why, but it did. And so we had to order another one. Well, we had to go. We were going on vacation within hours, thinking that maybe we can get this thing done and get it sent back. Well, to no avail. We needed a parallel tip, which to me means that's been worked on before. So that's what. So we ordered a parallel tip. We got it when we came back from vacation, and it fits like a dream. Okay, fits like a dream. So in between that time frame, what I did is I cleaned up the outside of the club to give it more of a uniform appearance using the wavy wheel. And that's what we did with that. Part of the assembly, we have to find the, the spine and the, the, the spine and the flow of the club. And that's what you're gonna see next. Okay, now that we've done that part, I go to my assembly phase, and the assembly phase is basically we picked out a black uh, ferrule to make it look traditional, and we're just waiting for it to dry. And when we get done with that, then we'll you'll see us, we'll be putting on the grip and we'll talk more about the shaft. All right, we've talked about the spine and the flow, and this is the flow part. So. What we're going to be doing is you got to attach the club head to the shaft and one of the easiest ways to pull that off is actually use fishing line and that's what you're seeing here and what it does it takes up the space for the glue and holds the club in place now we've got the flow and we put it up at 12 o'clock just going down at the very top and i put it into the frequency machine now this is a twofer and what i mean by that is that once i get it set i got it set to the right length and then I put my laser line on it and I start tweaking it. Now what I do check is for frequency to check to make sure I have the proper flex. Now, is this a one and done kind of opportunity? Absolutely not. As you're seeing right here, it takes, it might take two or three shots at it in order to get that laser line to go straight up and down. Now in a lot of cases what this did is it bounced two or three times and I'll be darned if the thing didn't decide to uh, wobble. So you have to get it to where it will be a consistent straight up and down in order for that to happen. And that's what we get. Now once we get that off of there, we've got to mark it so that when we put it together, that the thing will be good to go when we go and do the assembly. And that's making sure that we have the tip prepped and ready for going. Alright, the last part of this is we have the, we have the ferrule done, it's looking shiny, and now we have to put on the grip. He didn't say you want anything extra, right? Okay. We didn't get any instruction on 
whether or not we wanted extra so we're going to make it standard and we're going to put on the grip and again we like to see it so that the head is straight up and down now this oversize does have for a two iron has a truckload of offset and that's probably what made it playable in the day because two irons are pretty hard to hit and the the ones that were really hard to hit had very very little offset because it was just so much club to bring around so the stuff here that has the all the offset on it is actually a, a pretty good idea all right so low goes up and it goes straight down to 12 o'clock and it's parallel with this particular club we're going to check it real quick make sure it looks good at address quick adjustment because I just didn't like the way it looked alrighty we're gonna we're gonna wipe this down we're gonna put a stick around we're gonna talk a little bit more so we got the side with the grip on and we put the shaft band on and the last thing I'm doing is I'm giving it wax which is what I do for every repair and every build that I do we put a, a coat of uh, car wax on it and that's just to kind of give it a bit of a initial protection it's not something that stays on there forever. If anybody's ever caught, you know, washed their cars and waxed their cars, they know that it doesn't stay forever. But it's a, a good initial start. Try and stay away from the face because you're not allowed to have too much crap on the face. However, you can put it anywhere, everywhere else. Now, pro tip number 3422 in all my videos. When you're putting on a shaft band, we put on the shaft band. Let's see if we can get this in here. Shaft band. There we go. You want to make it so that it aligns. See, there's no get the align. So there are lines, and you want them to match up, right? Uh, a little bit off's not too bad. A lot off is really bad. So it's the way that it makes it look, much like finishing the ferrule. All right. We see how nice and nice and shiny that the ferrule is, and that it's smooth in the whole nine yards. So we did take a, I did spec this out and it came out to just add a D4 and it's at 40 inches. The original spec was 39 and a quarter, so it's three quarters over. And the, the, sw the swing weight was D4, duh. And the, the flex of this thing is stiff. It, it turned out just like any other uh, dynamic old S300 in the stiff range would do for us. Now again, as a, as a recovery on this is that this is the DCI oversized, so it is a bit of a dated model, but the two iron uh, is going to be very low lofted as they normally are. But this has just a whole bunch of offset, which should help uh, you know bring the club to square. And we've also finished it off with the with a Golf Pride with a Golf Pride MCC2. Did I just do that upside down? <laughs> a Golf Pride. MCC4 Plus uh, standard grip and I really like these grips they provide a lot of traction in the humidity as far as I'm concerned and it did good so that's putting together a club that's going to go back to Israel right so if remember this guy right up here your beginnings will be humble so prosperous will your future be and again thank you for sending this and having the trust in us to send it all the way from Israel and it will be coming back shortly. And as always, if you have any questions, put them in the show notes below, and let's see your scores go low.